The deepest earthquake ever detected should not have been possible, according to geologists. And uh, I'm, we're going to review this because of the recent very deep earthquakes we've had in the deep mantle of the Tonga Fiji area and also towards the North Island of New Zealand, which has a super volcano. This is the huge mantle plume that you can see there. And uh, this is, of course, the uh, uptick in very, very big earthquakes in the area of Tonga and the trenches there, the 6.5 the 6 magnitude today and an earthquake swarm of about 10 earthquakes of uh, over 5 magnitude. And uh, what's really significant is the depth of these earthquakes are in the deep mantle in the asthenosphere. If you see the video before this one, you'll be able to see there. Now, according to what live science is telling us, one of these, it's uh, this deepest earthquake occurred in the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ring of Fire. The quake occurred in the lower mantle, well deep than, deeper than previous quakes. Scientists detected the deepest earthquake ever, staggering 751 kilometers below the Earth's surface. The ones that we had today recently are about uh, that deep, about 650 kilometers down. The depth puts the quake in lower mantle, where seismologists expect earthquakes to be impossible. Okay, so this is the lower mantle area. So uh, we see that earthquakes are possible there, even though seismologists believe that they should not have been possible. So what is happening there? What's happening in Earth's lower mantle is the question. Because we have a lot of these earthquakes. I mean, there's what, about 10 of them that are that deep in the recent days. So what's going on there? The, that depth puts the quake in the lower mantle where it, the earthquake should be impossible. That's because under extreme pressures, rocks are more likely to bend and deform than they are to break with the sudden release of energy. So if, if there's an earthquake, that means earth, the, the earth is cracking. And uh, does that mean that, uh, my, I'm not a geologist, but my question is, that does that mean that the core is cooling or that the mantle is cooling and that it's not uh, bendable and deformable because it's breaking? Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. But minerals don't always behave precisely as expected. This is what Pamela Burnley, professor of geomaterials, University of Nevada, Las Vegas says. Even at pressures where they should transform into different, less quake-prone states, they may linger into old configurations. Now, just, just, just because they ought to change does not mean they will. What the earthquake may reveal then is that the boundaries within Earth are fuzzier and than they're often uh, given credit for. In other words, it's not a clear-cut layer uh, difference. Crossing the boundary, the quake first reported in June uh, in the journal Geophysical Research Letters was a minor aftershock to a 7.1 magnitude that shook the Bonin Islands of main, off mainland Japan in 2015. Researchers led by University of Arizona seismologist Eric Kizer detected the quake using Japan's high net array of seismic stations. The array is the most powerful system for detecting earthquakes in current use. This is what John Vidali, seismologist, University of Southern California says. The quake was small and could not be felt at the surface, so sensitive instruments were needed to find this. Well, the ones that we see today are, uh, we do, are not small. <laughs> okay, the ones that uh, in Vanuatu was 5.1 about five days ago at 237 kilometers depth. And uh, the one today, the, uh, the ones today, going back to my seismic Berkeley, are uh, 515, 4.9 magnitude, 4.4 at 503 kilometers depth, and 409 kilometers depth, 4.5 magnitude, recent earthquakes, uh, on the 26th of January, 4.3 magnitude at 536 kilometers depth. Today's 4.4 uh, 
at Fiji is 6 point, uh, 610 kilometers depth. And, you know, I mean, these are uh, yesterday's earthquake at Fiji, 4.6 kilometers depth, 547 kilometers depth. Uh, that was what we said, 4.7 magnitude, 4.6 magnitude. So all these huge, uh, these earthquakes are about four and a half, five magnitude. And they're deep and they're recent. They're right after the Tonga underwater uh, volcanic eruption. So I, I'm sure that the, I hope the geologists will come out and tell us why this is taking place. Now, um, the array uh, is the most powerful system detecting earthquakes in current use, said John Vidali. The quake was small, could not be felt at that time. Well, these are felt. Now, the depth of earthquakes still needs to be confirmed by other researchers, but the finding looks reliable, he says. They did a good job, so I tend to think it's probably right. Okay, they should come out and tell us what's happening in Tonga now. Concerning this earthquake, the deep earthquake that was hardly felt, well, the, we, today we have deep earthquakes that are very much felt. He said this makes a quake something of a head scratcher. The vast majority of earthquakes are shallow, originating within the Earth's crust and upper mantle with just 100 kilometers under the surface. So this is like five times, six times deeper in the crust, which extends down only 20 kilometers on average, that's 12 miles. The rocks are cold and brittle. And when these rocks undergo stress, they can only bend a little before breaking, releasing energy like a coiled spring. Deeper in the crust and lower mantle, the rocks are hotter and under higher pressure, which makes them less prone to breaking because they're more pliable, they're like more elastic. But at this depth, earthquakes can happen when high pressures push on fluid-filled pores in the rocks, forcing the fluids out. And under these conditions, rocks are also prone to brittle breaking, Burnley said. These kinds of dynamics can explain quakes as far down as 400 kilometers. Well, the quakes that we recently had are 640 kilometers. So 50% deeper. So he says these kind of dynamics can explain quakes 400 kilometers down, which is still in the upper mantle. But even before the 2015 Bonin aftershock, quakes have been observed in the lower mantle down to about 670 kilometers. That's 420 miles. And these are the types of quakes we're seeing recently, okay, in the Tonga area. So those quakes have long been mysterious, Burley said. The pores in the rocks that hold water have been squeezed out, so fluids are no longer a trigger. At that depth, he says, we think all of the water should be driven off, and we're definitely far, far away from where we would see classic brittle behavior. This has always been a dilemma, she said. Changing minerals, the problem with earthquakes deeper than around 249 miles, that's about uh, 300, 400 kilometers, has to do with the ways the minerals behave under pressure. Much of the planet's mantle is made up of minerals called olivine, which is shiny and green. Around 249 miles down, the pressure causes olivine's atoms to rearrange into different structures. A bluish mineral called wadslayite, and another uh, 10 kilometers deeper, wadslayite rearranges into ringwoodite. Finally, around 680 kilometers depth, this is the kind of earthquake we're seeing recently, into the mantle, ringwoodite breaks down into two minerals, bridgemanite and periclase. Geoscientists can't probe that far into the earth directly, of, of course, but they can use lab equipment to recreate extreme pressures and create these changes at the surface. And because seismic waves move differently through different material phases, Geophysicists can see signs of these changes by looking at vibrations caused by large earthquakes. That last transition marks the end of the upper mantle and the beginning of the lower mantle. That's important because these mineral phases is not their names, but that each behaves differently. It's similar to graphite and diamonds, said Birdley. Both are made of carbon, but in different arrangements. Graphite is a form that's stable at Earth's surface, while diamonds are the form that's stable deep in the mantle. And both behave very differently. Graphite is soft, gray, and slippery, as we have in the lead of the pencil, while diamonds are extremely hard and clear. As olivine transforms into its higher pressure phases, it becomes more likely to bend 
and less likely to break in a way that triggers earthquakes. So if we have earthquakes as steep, what does that mean? Is the core getting colder or is it cold getting colder down there? I have no idea. Now, geologists were puzzled by earthquakes in the upper mantle until the 1980s and still don't all agree on why they occur there. Burnley and her doctoral advisor, mineralogist Harry Green, were the ones to come up with the potential explanation. In the experiments in the 1980s, the pair found that olive and mineral phases were not so neat and clean. In some conditions, for example, olivine can skip an watsonite phase and head straight to ringwoodite. And right at the transformation of, from olivine to ringwoodite, under enough pressure, the mineral could actually break instead of bend. Burnley said, if there was no transformation happening in my sample, it would not break. But the minute I had transformation happening and I was squishing it at the same time, it would break. Burnley and Green reported their findings back in 1989 in the journal Nature, suggesting that this pressure and the transition zone could, be, could explain earthquakes below 250 uh, miles. That's about 400 uh, kilometers. The new Bonin earthquake going deeper. It's deeper than this transition zone, however. At 467 miles down, it originated in a spot that should be squarely in the lower mantle. So one possibility is that the boundary between the upper and lower mantle is just not exactly where seismology is expected to be in the Bonin region. This is what Heidi Houston, geophysical uh, geophysicist at University of Southern California, said. And uh, she said the area of the Bonin Island is a subduction zone where a slab of oceanic crust is diving beneath a slab of continental crust. And this sort of things, uh, uh, this sort of thing tends to have a warping effect. It's a complicated place. We don't know exactly where this boundary between upper and lower mantle is. The paper author argues that the subduction slab of crust may have essentially settled onto the lower mantle firmly enough to put the rocks there under a tremendous amount of stress, generating enough heat and pressure to cause a very unusual break. Burnley, though, suspects the most likely explanation has to do with minerals behaving badly, or at least oddly. The continental crust that plunges towards the center of the earth is much cooler than the surrounding material, she said, and that means that the minerals and the area might not be warm enough to complete the phase changes they are supposed to at a given pressure. Again, diamonds and graphite are a good example, Burnley said. Diamonds aren't stable at Earth's surface, meaning they won't form spontaneously, but they don't degrade into graphite when you stick them into engagement rings. And that's because there's a certain amount of energy the carbon atoms need to rearrange, and the Earth's surface temperatures, that energy is not available. Something similar may happen at depths with olivine, Burnley said. The mineral might be under enough pressure to transform into a non-brittle phase, but if it's too cold, say because of a giant slab of chilly continental crust all around it, it might stay olivine. And this could explain why an earthquake could originate in the lower crust, it's just not as hot down there as scientists expect it to be. Burnley said, my general thinking is that if the material is cold enough to build up enough stress to release it suddenly in an earthquake, it's also cold enough for the olivine to have been stuck in its olivine structure. So whatever the cause of deep quakes, it's not likely to be repeated often. Houston said, only about half of subduction zones around the world even experience deep earthquakes. And the kind of large earthquakes that pre preceded this ultra deep one only occur every two to five years on average. And she said, this is a pretty darn rare occurrence. Well, it's not rare today. Not at all rare today. Not rare. They should be rare, but they're not. Okay, this one is also deep, Vanuatu. But uh, they're not at all rare. They're all over the place. And these are all, I, I expect, I don't have, I, I did not find any, well, maybe they're still working on an article concerning these deep earthquakes because they're very deep. Look at this. Uh, this one is not deep, okay, 6.2, but um, this is the cluster that we had today. The bigger one is under there, 6.5, where is it, somewhere in there, that's 5.8, but these are, uh, these are deep, okay even deeper still 
down that back there, 640, 42 kilometers depth, so in the, in the lower mantle. So they should be coming out with even this one, I think. This one, no, that's, uh, that's not the other one. Okay, yeah, this one here. Okay, so even these are deep, so they should be coming out with an article telling us why all these deep earthquakes in the lower mantle all of a sudden. So please leave your comments, and thank you for your support.